All right, guys, we are back. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. As always, it is so great to see you. And friends, welcome to episode 242 Photography Talk Success Interview. Today's success story comes all the way from Spain. It gives me great pleasure to introduce my guest, Wayne Chasson. Wayne, what do you say? You ready to get this going? Absolutely. All right. Now, friends, Wayne has been a professional photographer for 37 years with heavy focus on architecture and interior photography. Now, Wayne, I've given our listeners just a taste of what you and I are going to be talking about. Before we take a deeper dive here, can you share with the listeners a little bit more about yourself? Okay, well, uh, I think since I was born in, I was always drawn to the arts. I started in video at 14 in the San Francisco Bay Area, unusual in those times. Morphed into photography by re-encountering Spain, which I'd known in my childhood. And um, that's become my life's passion along with music and my family and food. Wow, so you're originally from California. It's complicated. I was born in Florida, but I, I don't really identify with that. I grew up in California from the ages of 10 to 18, 19, and moved to Spain permanently at 19 to become a photographer. Uh, not necessarily an architectural one, but that's what happened. Wow, holy smoke. So do you ever get back to, you know, pre-COVID, do you get back to the States much? Uh, I've had on and off periods. I actually realized at one point I hadn't been to California in 20 years, which freaked me out. Uh, but when I came back to Spain, once I settled, I did make it back like once a year to see New York, California. And then there were years where I couldn't go. And the last five years, I was really fortunate. I was basically pretty much on a world tour and made it to California and, and New York. I mean, an amazing amount of times uh, until COVID hit. Wow. So the, you know, it's funny you bring up New York because pre-COVID, this is the first year Usually, if it's not for uh, Photo Plus Expo in October, November time frame, my wife and my family will get up to New York uh, at least once a year. And just hearing that out loud, it's like, boy. I have a lot of family in New York. And obviously, it's the launch board, spring pad. Uh, you know, it's the closest connection from Spain if I'm heading over to the States. So it's always logical to land there. So. Living over in Spain, do you guys have any sort of kind of a similar Thanksgiving style holiday over there? Not really for Thanksgiving, although, of course, in the modern world, Black Friday has certainly been adopted. Uh, I have to say I have re-encountered Thanksgiving to kind of to my surprise. I'd sort of forgotten about it. But to me, it's the most fam family oriented American holiday. It, it seems it seems like such a quality time with the family and eating and enjoying and relaxed and not as commercial. I've, I've fallen in love with it. Well, Wayne, before we jump into your journey as a photographer, to get the ball going, my friend, what has you most excited about the photography industry today? The digital transformation and revolution. Uh, I believe, you know, this is just getting going. And when it started for me, I was a late jumper on and jumped on earlier than I wanted to because I didn't feel the quality was there, but I knew I was actually going to be too far behind. And at first I thought that the best days were over, but now I'm so excited about the tools and this is just going into everything and everywhere. I mean, you know, drones and video and 3D and, and the possibilities are endless. I mean, if you're not excited about that, you shouldn't be in the industry. All right, Wayne, here's where the fun's going to start here. I'm gonna take a dive in some of the questions I have here for you. So let's get this going. And what we're gonna do here first, you and I, we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna jump in the Wayback Machine. We're gonna go back to the very day, the very morning, if you happen to remember, that you picked up a camera for the very first time. Wayne, what inspired you to become a photographer? There were a lot of moments, actually, because I have photographs that I took as a kid passing through New York the first time we moved to Spain. Uh, I have uh, various moments, actually, but the real uh, moment that I became a photographer was I'd lived in Spain four years as a kid during the Franco period and I started visiting again at 16 and it was re-encountering that Spain those memories of my childhood which even though they were transitioning to democracy and felt like a lifetime to me even though it had only been six years those memories had to be captured I didn't understand at the time that I was doing something historical in a way I just had it came from my heart I had to capture and share those images of my childhood with the world. And that's where it all started. Would you happen to remember the first photo that you took that validated your interest as a photographer? 
Absolutely. Um, I, I visited basically Spain two or three summers in a row after that first return before moving here permanently. And each summer I would use borrowed cameras and rolls of film that people gave to me. When I came back to California, I was working with a film director and I would do slideshows of the pictures. And the first summer, the pictures were OK. I had no idea what I was doing. The second summer, the pictures were amazing. And the third summer, they were so amazing that I decided to become a photographer, go to Spain and do that. And there was one image that stands out of my stepfather, who's actually originally from Boston, sitting on this wicker chair in a whitewashed old Spanish home, almost a ruin. It looked like a painting. And everyone looked at that and said, oh, wow, <laughs> basically, that was it. And I still have that I still have that image in a bunch of those on my website, you know, in a, in a portfolio of their own nowadays. I didn't even own a camera at the time. But that said to me, you are a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was it. My, my uh, boss, the film director, hired me to, to be the still photographer on all those productions until I moved to Spain because I just you know, had to do that. When you, when you had started out, what were some of the challenges, Wayne, that you, that you had and how did you overcome these? Uh, well, the first challenge was deciding which camera system to buy. I mean, I was just like, Canon, like I was lost. So I got a lot of advice from pros who I knew and, and made the decision for Canon for whatever reasons at the time. Uh, but really, I think the more important things were people kept talking to me about style. You've got to find your style. You've got to have a style. And you're like, what? What's this? What's my style? What's a style? How do I find that? And so I think what I would say to people is what I encountered is I never actually searched or tried to create a style. I followed my eye learned by wasting a lot of film, which fortunately people don't have to do nowadays because that's pretty expensive. And over a period of time, my eye, my style happened. That's who I am. That's how I see things. That's how I capture things. That's how I represent them. Now, that's how I found the style. The other thing that was really hard, especially as I moved to Spain at 19 in a little town with no internet, no, you know, $4 a minute to call the States and all of that, I was lost in the, in the middle of Spain without my mother, as they say. Uh, the ASMP Business Bible. I mean, that's how I, with no business training, got a business up and running and managed to survive, thanks to the ASMP guidance. What do you enjoy photographing most? I love just wandering around pretty much anywhere and whatever catches my eye shooting that. I, I could pretty much do, whether it's a, an, an urban scene or whether it's lost in the countryside, I mean, I, I just love that. But, uh, it, you know, I really have a connection to architectural and interior photography, and it probably comes from the fact that I come from generations of architects who happen to have had, most of them, a passion for photography. Um, so while I knew I did not want to be an architect as a child, somehow when I became a photographer, I became an architectural photographer. So your roots or your fondness for this style of photography goes really far back, but when you first picked up a camera, would you say that your interest was shooting interiors and architecture back then or did it kind of slowly no well uh it's really interesting because i started basically when i was living in sausalito uh, i think the first time i consciously picked up a camera because i went to visit my dad in in Jeddah, and that was exotic so i took pictures of Jeddah with an authorization from the mayor which we got because you can't take pictures and I took pictures of Sausalito at nighttime. And the funny, I found a roll of film that I I'd shot as a kid visiting Sausalito. And when I looked at it, I was like, these are the same things that, that capture my interest now. Twilight shots, double exposures, uh, slow shutter speeds to capture an abstract uh, self-portrait. You know, all these things which I find still are things that I have a great passion about. You know, trees, um, reflections, double exposures, twilight. I still love the same things that were catching my eyes from the first time I picked up a camera. Do you remember what your first camera was? Yeah, it was a Canon AT1. I, I have it there on the shelf behind me. I've got. <laughs> I, finally took, I finally took all my folders and files from forty, almost forty years down, and put up my camera collection there, and it's it's still up there. <laughs> that is awesome. It's about the old days, you could still use your oldest camera because the quality wasn't in the camera; it was in the lens and the film. Sure. Whereas now, a camera body has, you know, it's it stays counted. What has been your proudest moment as a photographer? Mm, um, obviously, the times that I have been recognized for my dedication and passion. Uh, I've twice received um, uh, awards for my basically for my career here because I've been going a long time since I was nineteen. 
But I think my proudest moment is is twofold. One, well, one being able to live off of it. I'm pretty proud that I've been able to live off photography for 37 years. That I mean, doing what you love is an amazing thing to be proud of. Uh, but I think fi- every day I finish a job, you're 10, 14 hours chasing the light and the moods around the house, and you finish no matter what was going on, you finish what you know was a great job. That's an amazing, proud feeling. Again, I've done it again. Wow, we pulled it off. But I, I think I'm very proud when somebody looks at one of my images and it reaches them. That's what it, that's what it's all about. It's creating the images, half of it, and sharing the images, the other half. And that's one of the things I love about my Instagram, which is absolutely non-commercial right now. It's really just pictures I capture from the iPhone, like the old days when I had a borrowed camera with one lens. This is my camera with one lens because I'm still on the 6 Plus. i got to change. But I'm still on the 6 Plus, one lens. And whatever catches my eye, I shoot it. I, 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 I put the mood into it in Photoshop Express quickly, and I share it. And that can be a question of minutes. I, I really enjoy. I really enjoy you know doing and sharing it. We're going to shift gears a little bit here. And we're going to talk about, well, we've talked about proudest moments. We've talked about things that you really enjoy about photography. Now we're going to go to the other side of the fence so i'm going to ask you to talk to us to tell us about a time in your photographic journey where you failed at something wayne and more importantly here how did you get up how did you pivot from that moment take us to ground level what's going through your head at that time um there's there's two concrete and two abstract examples and i'll do them quickly uh for the time i remember a rare time it usually doesn't happen to me but i went to do a shoot a uh, travel shoot within spain for a new company and we got there and it was roaring there was uh, raining it was no good light uh the client was there the client's client was there the owners of the house were there the kids were there the representative there was this pack of people and we were supposed to start up and i froze i kind of panicked i mean that's exceptionally rare what did i do i went into the bathroom excuse myself went into the bathroom and tried to chill myself out and focus on what i had to do uh another uh, another time we developed a whole job in c41 uh, instead of e6 but you know that was just a chain of errors um really i think two things one in hindsight over the years i didn't focus on where i wanted to go so much because work and life in my career was happening on its own So I didn't have so much focus put on where do I want to go with this? Who would I like to be working for and what direction do I want to? I think that's an important thing to do before you realize, whoa, I've been caught up in life and I haven't focused enough on that. I've just run with it. Um, And another thing as a father, a proud father of two boys, uh, two men now, 25 and 21, there were years where I really put into my business some development that I now regret because that didn't actually some of those things didn't even pan out and I missed critical time with my kids when they were growing up so best advice I think I can give anyone is as a photographer and a person make sure you don't miss out on your family balanced life is a definitely a happy life I'm going to go back to the the first example just to ask that you expound just a little bit further so you're in the the restroom there you're trying to chill out a little bit because this is something that's quite common with a lot of photographers out there when they get behind their camera for the first time and they have a audience that is expecting them to perform to capture the moment and it can be quite create a lot of anxiety nerve-wracking and so forth so as you're in there you're trying to chill out what what did you find worked for yourself to kind of calm the nerves to get out there find your zen whatever you needed to do what what did you need to tell yourself to get out there and get your game face on? Uh, I think basically, first of all, I had to calm myself down. I had to focus on the fact that I was excited about doing the job, even though the situation was making me nervous. Everything was seemed to be going against me. But I, I basically, I tried to reinforce myself. I'm like, I know I'm good. They called me because I'm good. They wanted me. So I've got to get out there and do what I always do. For some reason, I've gone into a panic. But I need to get over that and go do what I do best. Very cool. And it was hard. I have to admit that was that, that you know that was a, that was a, like a four day shoot that uh, you know I had a hard time getting through that and it was not one of my best shoots for whatever you know variety of reasons. It's one of the rare sore thumbs that stands out. But you know it's good to learn from those. Indeed, and it probably became 
easier. I, obviously, as you were getting out, more and more it became easier I and easier. Going fifteen years at least when that happened, so it was very. I think it was just a combination of pressure and and factors. Okay, so finding the time to get out and shoot is a big challenge for many. Wayne, how do you find the time in your busy schedule to get behind your camera? And what I'm referring to here is Wayne time behind the camera. You've spoken about your passion and what you you love so much shooting these these things. How do you make the time to get out there and actually do it? Um, it it's actually a hard thing to do because I find that the business and personal life takes up a lot of time. So I either have a very specific project which motivates me to go out and do it. But what I get in a lot more often now is on my assignments around the world. I will try to find time, even if it's at nighttime when we wrap up, to go out and explore on my own. And that obviously inspires me greatly. And I've made an exhibit of that two years ago uh, called uh, Urban Shimmer, which was all about reflections and lights and, and such in, in urban places around the world that I'd been in. But for me, the easiest way is heading out with an iPhone or a small camera and just wandering again wandering out there into the countryside, into the cities, wherever it is, and just following my eye. I, okay, I got to tell you this great story. I, let me cut in real quick here. Thanksgiving visit to New York. My kids are young. Uh, they're misbehaving. We go on the ferry to see the Statue of Liberty. They're, they're not behaving. My wife says, let's get a taxi back to the house. And I'm at Wall Street looking up at these amazing clouds and glass buildings and point up and take a couple of pops. And my wife goes, would you stop doing that? You're always taking photos. We're, we're with the kids. We're on vacation. And to cut the story short, a couple months later, I said to my wife, you remember that time I was taking pictures obnoxiously? She goes, yeah. I said, it just sold for, you know, four number, four, $10,000 for a stock sale. But we, of course, we didn't get the 10000 wow. I said, but so just remember next time <laughs> I'm excited about something, you might want to give me a little leeway. Poor girl. Poor girl. That but she can walking with me anywhere because I always fly, fall behind with the iPhone, with the camera, whatever it is, taking pictures of whatever's capturing my, and you know, she just has to go on without me. I think most of the photographers that are going to be watching this with spouses gonna that are not <laughs> photographers know exactly what you're talking about here. I have to ask you, we all have weaknesses. Wayne, what is yours related to photography? It's interesting. I get more nervous when I have to do people shots. I really enjoy them. I have some portraits and a uh, you know, variety of people shots on my website, and, I'm, and I've done a lot of people sh uh, integrated into the architecture um, as well. And actually, I think I'm really good at controlling that scenario because photographing a person and photographing a building are almost two different photo techniques. So blending the two together uh, before it was possible on film when you couldn't blend, you know, just getting those two to happen. And now with obviously with digital, we have a lot more options, but that makes me nervous. I think I do a good job of it. I don't say I'm certainly not a lifestyle photographer. I, there are people who, you know, kick my behind shooting these people shots. I'm just like, wow, I'd love to do that. So I have a bit of an inferiority complex in that sense. But I also know that I can get up in a crane and shout over a bullhorn to about 400 employees down on the beach and get them to form and get that group shot or get a couple posing appropriately. So. I, I am okay, but it, uh, it's my weakness. I get antsy when I have a shoot coming up with people in it, and I don't, you know, when it's a, a standard architectural shoot. Nailing a composition right can be a challenge for many. What do you think is the trick to really mastering composition? This one's going to be really short. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this to me is so entirely intuitive. I never studied it. You know, I was a self-taught photographer. It just flows from me. It just flows for me. I, I, I honestly, I have to sit down and work out how I feel about that and, and what I would say to people because I want to do some online courses. I've developed several of them, but I've never actually specifically talked about that uh, area of composition unless we're talking about architectural photography, in which case there's obviously some basics that make a shot look good. But in photography in general, I mean, I love symmetry. I love repeated patterns, but I'd have a hard time saying, how do you make a good composition? There are a lot of photographers who are just starting out and, you know, wait, they don't have the money to buy the camera gear that they want. What advice would you give to them? Uh, that's not a problem, guys, because it's not in the gear. 
the gear is merely a technical means to achieve what you need to do. So as your business grows and as you learn more, you will need more tools and you will invest in those as needed. Uh, it doesn't matter. Get a good body. Get it, get, look into what system is the one that's going to work for you best because there's a billion kinds of different photographers and, and fields to work in. Are you a bird photographer? Are you an architectural photographer? Are you a fashion photographer? Whatever it is. So find out where you want to go, what system has feels good in your hand, feels ergonomic, you're comfortable working with it, because you got to be comfortable, it's got to become intuitive. You don't want something, oh, this feels boxy, this feels, I don't like the menu layout, whatever it is. But get the system that has the right lenses and setup for you, and invest first in a good body, because nowadays the bodies do matter more than in the past, because you need a good sensor and start building up your lens kit you certainly don't want to go for like a three quarters you know and they move to full frame later you know get uh, i can't afford it we'll just get a full frame body if that's your thing and one good lens and then build up or two good lenses whatever your budget can don't worry about the equipment don't sweat the equipment and if you don't know what you're doing don't get any flash equipment to start out with do the natural light learn that get squeeze every juice you can out of natural light and then when you absolutely need to add flash Start incorporating that. Don't try to take on too much all at once. Great advice. That's you, know, you see a lot of photographers that in that pool that are starting out that do have the money, but now they go out there and they buy everything without understanding of what everything does and how it works together in place. How do you feel, Wayne, photography has impacted the way that you see the world? Uh, it's impacted it greatly. For, in first, uh, first off, it impacts how you interact with the world when you are, being a, when you are a photographer. I, I, I like to say I eat, live, live and breathe photography. It's become an essential part of who I am and how I see the world. Um, and once you get over that initial hesitancy of, oh, you know, is it rude or improper to photograph this person without asking them? But if you ask them, of course, it's a bit like physics. You know, once you observe a reaction, the reaction can change. So once you get over that part, for me, the most important thing has been the realization, which I knew but didn't really grasp until many decades went by. Every single picture you take is historical and valuable in one sense or another. You don't know if the silly corporate headshot that you just took for somebody might be tomorrow the head of Pfizer, or you know, you don't know if that picture you took of your dear friend laughing the other day dies from COVID. I'm sorry, let's be brutally honest here. I've photographed a landscape when I started out that was ripped to shreds by mining companies and no longer exists. Those are dramatic examples, maybe a bit too dramatic for these times, but, but it's true. Every picture you take is unique. It's a historical frozen moment in time that really can't be recreated. I've actually had trouble going back and recreating uh, you know, images that I've, for whatever reason, and it, they don't quite come out the same. Uh, that to me is, is really important, the realization that we are sort of uh, memory time keepers, whether we realize it or not. What do you see in what do you see with photographers doing today that if they did it differently tomorrow they would get or find more success? One thing that irks me a lot, but I do it myself now that we've gone digital, is, is photographers going eh, and looking at looking at the L C D, looking at the L C D. I mean I of course I do it as well, but I think people need to have a really clear version. Another thing I've noticed with some photographers, you, you see everything on the web. Uh, it, it's, you know, some people are amazingly creative and mind blowing and all that. And other people are like, these are nice shots, but they all look the same. Are they, they don't know how to work in a different light. They, they always want to have exactly the same look in every image. I, I don't quite understand that. To me, I cover a, you know, a, quite a variety of portfolios uh, aside from architectural interior within it. And I feel that if anybody goes into my pictures of, of these old people in Spain from 40 years ago, or my architectural photography or some landscapes, people look at it and go, that's a Chassan. For whatever reason, I've developed that vision. So it's okay to have wildly different lighting and composition and, and subjects and still be you. But I, I think two quick things are 
reach out to other photographers. There's so many photographers I know who are jealous and, and rigid and don't want to talk with other photographers and are worried about they're going to take away my business. No, be open, share. Hey, God, this client isn't, is he problematic or what? You know, how did you resolve this? That you gain so much more by being open and sharing things. Obviously, don't share your deepest tricks to your next door competitor, but I think being open and, and learn your cost of doing business. Learn what it means to stay afloat. And that is a sign of confidence as well and it yeah it's uh yeah that's a good yeah. thing a very good thing but, but i think you know you can gain some confidence by reaching out to people who are at a higher level than you in the beginning and who will hopefully probably not all of them share with you and the ones that don't you you know that that's the case to get your creative eye focused where do you draw your inspiration from uh it, to me it's really a matter of lighting form and the composition, which, as I say to me, flows very naturally. So uh, I, I try to look at things with a stranger's eye. You know, I'm, I was born in the States. I spent most of my life in Spain. When I go to, I, I'll, I'll always be American. I'll always be Spanish. I'll never be fully either one. But it gives me an advantage in the sense that whenever I'm in either place, I get to look at things with the eyes of somebody from the outside, see something with a different perspective, not lost in the daily grind, the fact that you become habituated to a certain image. So I think the important thing is to look from the heart and to look a little bit with with, with a new vision at things, to discover what's beautiful or ugly or whatever it is you want to represent in your photograph about them. I like that. Yeah, the I, I've not heard that one, looking at through this through a stranger's set of eyes there it's an interesting way of putting that that me of meaning the, you're, you're in a strange land yep <laughs> indeed. although they're not plans for me in this case yeah very cool i think it's important when it gives I, us an advantage sorry no <laughs> no go ahead no it, it gives us an advantage over the people who and i'm speaking geographically now but this could be applied i think as well within a special uh, you know photographer photographic speciality somebody is always shooting food always shooting food well hey maybe a fashion photographer suddenly has this great take on food because he's seeing it with different eyes maybe maybe not right for me your photos i've looked at your photos they look absolutely amazing i have to ask what is your secret sauce when it comes to the post-processing side self-taught so I find that my secret sauce is a little bit um, unusual and rigid but it, it's what works for me I shoot Canon and I, my experimentation it has been that I like how Canon DPP software processes the raw files so I will review and process in Canon DPP then I'll take them into bridge and finish uh, sorting and uh, if an image has uh, needs exposure fusion uh, because nowadays we don't have to light everything. There's a lot of things we can achieve with exposure fusion because we want to or because we couldn't light, in which case I'll take it to Photomatix software, which aids me as a non-digital uh, geek. Um, you know, it really aids me to make a couple of different versions, maybe uh, even of exposure fusion blends, which I can then manually blend together to my satisfaction, perhaps even with the brightest and darkest original on, on the either side of that. Um, and then do all the all wrapping up in Photoshop. I do have to say, I studied Lightroom uh, intensively at the beginning of my digital career, didn't go that route for whatever reason, and I'm now rediscovering it. It still hasn't convinced me to drop my standard workflow, um, but for example, just today I was looking at some pictures I shot 2015 on an assignment in Tokyo, some pictures I did for myself wandering around. And I had such a blast whizzing through Lightroom, adjusting for every, because everything's <laughs> different there. Every shot is a different mood and scene. So I am able to so quickly go through those and enhance the mood and play with them uh, that I'm finding Lightroom an awesome tool, more for portrait and variety travel photography than for my straightforward architectural stuff. Very cool. It's funny that you bring that up. The I had always been a, a Photoshop guy and then switched over to where I use Lightroom quite a bit for, for myself there. Now, you brought up workflow a moment ago, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loop us back around over there. If you would, share with us a little bit of your, your, your workflow. Okay, so for the architecture and interiors work, it's basically that. I'll, uh, I'm pretty much using always uh, Canon Landscape uh, for exterior work and Canon uh, Standard for interiors. 
Um, I'm usually almost always doing some sort of exposure fusion, even on simple shots, just to give me the options. I'm taking those into photomatix. I'm making the combinations. I'm usually not nailing it in one. I, I almost always use photomatix actually in the natural mode, which is a very simple three slider uh, setup where I just play with those three sliders because depending on the images, the sliders actually wind up doing different things. So I get what I want there. If I don't, I layer a couple of versions of those together and, uh, you know, work on them heavily in Photoshop to correct any lines I wasn't nailing and to, you know, at this point, sometimes reconstruct entire buildings if I have to because a crane was in front of it and it has to be erased or whatever needs to be done. I see a lot, of, more... uh, a, a lot of the real estate, a lot of the architecture, a lot of the interior photographers using the HDR soft. Uh, platform there and so the yeah, it's popular I'm, I'm very comfortable with it and I also have a habit of if it, if it, if it works <laughs> you know, why fix it you yeah know, it works. don't mess with it <laughs> yeah. let's talk about what would you like people when somebody looks at your photo what would you like for them to walk away with when we're talking about my personal work uh, most of what I try to get across to the world is beauty I know it sounds a bit corny, but I think what I do as a photographer is uh, I go, whether it's a moment, a place, a, a, a building, a, a person, whatever it is that I'm shooting, I look to emphasize and enhance the beauty and a certain peace. We have enough negativity in life. And most of my clients obviously don't want me putting anything negative out there. I mean, I have clients who say there's clouds in the sky. We can't use this to promote real estate. This is the sunny blue Costa del Sol. You know, we don't want clouds in the sky. Well, I happen to love beautiful, wispy clouds. But uh, I'm trying to get people to, to, first of all, if it's a job, get across what the product or the mood is that we're trying to communicate. And second of all, I just want them to feel good. Let's take a dive into your camera bag here. What? Wayne, are three items, top three items in your camera bag that are must-have for you? Uh, Dinkum uh, lens, uh, lens shade. They have this sort of grill, like those Gorilla tripods. That it goes on the camera hot shoe. It has this Gorilla-type um, extension, and then it has a lens shade at the front. You know, I mean, the amount of issues I've had with lens flare, both on the 17 millimeter ultra wide lens and for example on a 200 millimeter portrait where I'm shooting back the person backlit. They actually very kindly, maybe I shouldn't say this, helped me put together an extended version because when you turn the camera vertical you lose a couple inches because you know you, it, got, it has to curve over to the top of the lens and with the 200 millimeter it was very long so they helped me put together a longer version of that which really comes in handy sometimes. That's one thing. Um, other things, actually a spare coin or Swiss army blade knife, because there are times when you need to get that quick plate off of that, uh, the bottom of the camera body. And, you know, I don't have my keys or I don't have that Swiss army blade knife or whatever it is. So a spare coin is really easy to have handy. And, uh, I mean, uh, I mean all sorts of odds and ends and gizmos, but you know, an Advil and a Kleenex aren't a bad thing to have in there as well. <laughs> Cam Ranger. Cam Ranger comes in really handy occasionally for me. That is awesome. You are stuck on a desert island and, you know, Wayne, you can only have one photography book with you. What book would that be? I went through this uh, of writing the text out. A um, Thousand and One Ways to Make Sushi would be the photo book I'd had. No, seriously. Mm. I, I think if I was on a desert island, I really wouldn't be interested in a photo book. When my batteries ran out and I wasn't able to take any pictures of what was going on, um, I, I think I'd really want a book about how to survive because that's something I'm not particularly familiar with. So, no, I'm not a photography book. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wayne, final question. And it is a fun one. Life has been found on another planet, and none other than Sir Richard Branson is piloting the Virgin Galactic, and he's put together a team of engineers, scientists, and doctors, and they've asked you to come along to document the journey. Now, the challenge is you can only bring one camera, two lenses, into other items. What would you bring with you? Okay, while it's a fun question, I'm gonna take this very seriously. I've always been fascinated by astronomy and the opportunity would be amazing. So I'm gonna be serious about this. I'd want the best body I could take with me. Uh, I don't have it, but I understand right now it would probably be the Canon R5, just because I'm familiar with the Canon system and it seems to be pretty amazing little beast. 
uh, although I personally haven't tested it out yet. So that would be my choice for body. Um, again, there'd be all sorts of cool lenses to take, but hey, I'm going to this brand new world and I have to try to capture every possible variation. So I'm going to go for either the 16 35 millimeter lens because I can put a filter comfortably in front of it to protect it or use a polarizer, or I might go for the 11 24, but it's got a bulbous front and being on a foreign planet, if that thing gets busted, I'm in trouble. So probably the 35. <laughs> And then I've got 2470. Well, the 24105, which I don't have. That, eh, uh, you know, the 7200. Okay, let's go for that Canon. I think they make a 28 to 300 lens, which I would never buy for myself, but that would be what I'd take because I'd have covered from 11 to 300. And then my two other objects, again, being very serious about this opportunity to document the, you know, life on a new planet, I'd probably take a tripod, probably not to capture the life, but to capture scenes on the planet to my satisfaction because to me a tripod is integral to a lot of my photography and i had to think real hard about this some something cute to say something funny now let's be you know honest i'll probably take a laptop because nowadays we live on our iphones the iphone isn't going to be much good to me there i'm on a laptop because i can have books i can have movies i can have music i can store my images i can manipulate my images i can hopefully communicate that's what i'd go for great great answers and Wayne what an amazing journey you've had here now before we part ways can you share with our listeners one final piece of advice and also where they can find you in the web then we'll say goodbye okay so I think my final piece of advice is make sure you love what you're doing if you're a photographer because either you're a superstar photographer or you're trying to make ends meet by doing something you enjoy doing so you you better have that in your heart and love what you're doing because there's probably better ways to earn a living uh, if you're not in it for love. And um, sorry, what was the second part? Of the Where can question? they find you on the web? Where can they find me? On, oh yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay, so they uh, my website really shows off my architectural commercial work and some of the work from my heart. That's www.chasam.com and I'll spell that because it's tricky. C H A S A N dot com. Uh, be thrilled to have you drop by there. And for something totally different, on Instagram, it's Wayne Chasan, again, C-H-A-S-A-N. Uh, that's, like I say, I rarely put my commercial work there for the moment. Mostly it's things that, like back when I started out, catch my eye. But now enhanced by, you know, the manipulation that we can do in the digital darkroom, which I never did in my early days shooting, you know, slide film. There wasn't a lot you could do. Just like that photography talk now if you want to learn more about wayne again check out the description below we have links to his websites down there wayne thank you very much for your generous time we thank you for your expert knowledge and we're going to see you next time it's been an honor